This is the Art Beauty Podcast, where we are always reaching for truth in beauty. Remember, the brands on the show are not paying to be here, so we get to ask them candid questions because you deserve to be informed so you can make the best choices for yourself. I'm Amber, and today my fabulous co-host is Dr. Loretta Seraldo. She is a board-certified dermatologist, been practicing for over 40 years, has an incredible background that we're going to talk all about, and she is also the founder of Dr. Loretta Skincare. It is such an honor to have you on today. I'm going to call you Dr. Loretta through this. Um, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Amber. It's a pleasure to be here. So I have to say, when I was researching your background, I mean, you have such an incredible history in skincare. I saw that you were actually um, involved in the development of the Fitzpatrick scale. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. That is insane. Um, and then you also opened one of the first, um, and please correct me if I'm wrong, cosmetic um, clinics. Dermatology clinics. Dermatology. Yeah. Well, that was a teaching clinic at University of Miami. We think maybe it was the first one in the whole country. So can you just give us a little bit of your background? Um, you sure. know? Yes, because I think that it really will give such a sort of like historical perspective on how short a time we really understand sun damage and external factors and all this. So I was in medical school in New York in the 1970s. And after my first year of medical school in 1975, I got a summer research job at up at Harvard Medical School in the dermatology department. And like most of the very few women who were in medical school in the night in the early 70s, uh, which I started in 74, most of us sort of entered medical school thinking that we would be pediatricians or obstetricians. But I was very interested in this research opportunity. So I get to the dermatology department, not understanding much about dermatology. And the head of the lab tells me that I'm going to be investigating the effects of the sun's UVA on human skin. So I was very interested in this. And right before we were going to go to lunch at the cafeteria, he said, you know, Loretta, by the way, I'd rather that you don't tell too many people what I'm doing, because many of the physicians in the cafeteria already are like so sure that not enough UVA reaches the surface of the earth for it to have an effect on our skin. Long story short, uh, I think you sort of know that the rest of history and uh, when we study the effects of the sun's UVA on human skin, that led to the development of what we call to this day broad spectrum sunscreen so that the FDA requires that all sunscreens now must protect not only from UVB, which is what they did in the 1970s, but also from UVA as well as UVB. That started in the 80s once all the research got done. Amazing. You know, and just here's something great that I've learned through my, if, if that gets confusing to people, I like to think of this UVA are the aging rates, right? Mm -hmm. So they're going to go a little bit deeper into the skin, affect the deeper layers of the skin where UVB um, are, are, they're actually curvier waves. So they uh, go less deep into the skin, but those are the burning. UVA exactly. is aging, UVB burning. But wow. Yeah. So UVA only, that research was really only being done since the eighties. Or in the yeah. 80s? Yeah, wow. No, actually in the, the 70s. 70s. It was, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was um, very interesting. Uh, actually, it was really done for the treatment of psoriasis. So when I got to that lab, they were called the photobiology labs at Harvard. They had already had Westinghouse make up UVA bulbs for the treatment of psoriasis. And then the question was, instead of doing intense UVA bulbs, could you actually go under the sun and actually what we did to do the research was we gave people a pill to make them a little more sensitive to UVA so we could really study the impact. And yeah, I think that I think that actually that whole background and perspective, I think then leads into some of the things that are now on the forefront of sun protection. Like it's been argued, you know, do we need the HEV blue light protection or not? But I think as we go on, we might get to that discussion today too. Oh, I would love to. Um, so, okay. So you, you clearly have done this. When did you decide to go into practice? Right. So basically what happened was, again, I sort of thought, you know, well, what will I become? And as I went into my third year of medical school, uh, 
I knew I, I actually was already dating one of my classmates who I uh, was with for 47 years until unfortunately his recent sudden death. But, um, okay. you know, I was dating my classmate. I wanted to have kids. We went on to have four, got married and have four kids. So when I got to uh, obstetrics, I was, oh, wow. You know, I don't think I'm going to have time to have a big family. When I got to pediatrics, again, this was the 1970s and there's still we didn't have good medicine for pediatric leukemias. And so that was sort of very depressing. And so I said to my husband, you know what? I am so fascinated with the field of dermatology and it could really also afford me this amazing lifestyle. I think, so I went back to Harvard for my, in my fourth year of medical school and did another big research project because that really then just sealed the deal for me that, that I was in love with dermatology. I love that too, because you were really a pioneer. You mentioned at the time there were not a lot of women entering the field. So thank you for sort of breaking through those barriers for us. Um, so, so, so you have been practicing um, dermatology for over 40 years now. Exactly. Um, and, and, and I do want to talk about this because, you know, I, I we're going to talk very much in detail about your skincare line, but your skincare line is all based on sort of this theory of like the aging theory of exposomes. So can you explain what exposome theory yeah. is? Yes. And honestly, I think this is very important and it doesn't even have anything necessarily to do with my skin curling, although I picked up on it in formulating. So uh, what I'm going to explain to is, of course, I went to uh, do the research and all of the research I did during medical school had to do with the effects of the sun. But then very interestingly, uh, you know, I got married to my husband during medical school and we decided to stay in New York. And I ended up doing my training up in the Bronx, New York. This started in uh, my dermatology residency started in 1979. And uh, believe it or not, you know, women kind has come a very long way since the 1970s. Yeah. So I would say the vast majority of the patients that I saw in my residency, the women did not have driver's licenses, did not have any access to go to, a, to the beach or you know a pool, forget it. And what we of course started to do then and do to this day is when people would come in to see us in the dermatology clinic, we would do total body exams to look for skin cancer. And what struck me from the very, very beginning, the first week of my residency, is that when we saw older people, so this would be, let's say, a woman in her 70s or 80s, and I'm talking to her at first, getting a little history, and I see she's very wrinkled, and she's got a lot of age spots, all the unwanted changes of aging. When I then had to pro had her put on a gown so that I could check all of her skin for skin cancer, I honestly was myself a little bit shocked to realize that even people who were elderly, who had really advanced aging changes on their face and their neck and all, when we got to examine the areas that were not exposed to the elements, right? Areas that were chronically covered by clothing, they always looked decades younger. Now, I'm gonna get back to what I said to you though. Uh, that started to really percolate through dermatology, dermatology literature, that it was only exposed skin that was really aging. And so in the 19, by late, the late 70s, especially early 80s, we started to use a term that I think is very popular, not just in dermatology literature, but in the lay literature, and it's called photo aging. And basically what that meant was, okay, it's not really your chronologic age that's causing all these unwanted changes, but that term photo, right? Like photobiology lips, photons from the sun. What it meant was all these unwanted changes were coming from the sun. But remember what I said to Amber, this was a very special population that I had of all these adorable little old ladies who like maybe they had come over from Sicily or God knows where, they didn't have cars. They stayed home ironing their husband's shirts and making the lunch for the kids. And these women hardly had any sun exposure, yet they had all of these hallmarks of such a disparity between skin that I have to just say was exposed 
to okay. the elements, to the external environment. So at that point, I started to sort of delve a little bit into, you know, well, what the heck is going on, right? Of course, we know, you know, a single sunburn can cause a lot of skin damage and all of this, but there must have been other factors. This was sort of what I started to believe, you know, many, many years ago. And as time has gone on, there's more and more research that, for instance, looks at the effects of pollution. Right. Now, what we now realize is that pollutants, and, and you've probably heard about this, and in fact, if you're listening in, if you haven't heard about this thing called particulate matter, all you really have to do, especially if you look up a state like Massachusetts or, you know, upstate New York, where we have uh, really right now from Canadian fires, a lot of particulate matter that's causing very unhealthy air quality conditions. Yeah. Well, particulate matter are these little pollution particles that happen to be at least 20 times smaller than our skin pores. So this particulate matter gets right into our skin, enters through our pores, but doesn't just stay in our pores. And there's good research to show that particulate matter is a major cause of what we call age spots, hyperpigmentation, and collagen breakdown and lines and wrinkles. So, you know, and then to add to this, and this is not meant at all, I'm going to sort of like suggest the, uh, what or expose the problem, but I'm going to suggest generically solutions, okay? Okay. So the thing is that it may be a little scary, and one more scary fact I have to tell you is that the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, tells us that many pollutants are up to one thousand times more concentrated in our homes than they are outdoors Yikes. a big big factor is dust mites they carry tremendous amount of particulate matter and the particulate matter can even come just from uh, paint residue on our walls when we turn on a gas stove we release a lot of uh, free radical damage particulate matter all of this so that is the bad that that you know, we need to be protecting ourselves, not just from the sun and not just when we're outside from pollution, but 24 seven. Now, clothing is a great way to protect ourselves. But what else can we do? Antioxidants. Yes. Right. That is so important. So for everybody who's listening in, and this isn't about buying a particular brand. This is about, please just be sure, go through what so many of us women have, which may be, you know, 10 moisturizers or 10 serums that you've got building up on your bathroom counter and medicine <laughs> cabinet and see, have you got some vitamin C? Have you got, you know, things like this and antioxidant C? Is anything labeled antioxidant moisturizer, antioxidant serum? Because antioxidants are really our best way to combat the free radical damage of pollution, but also the sun. So that's another thing. Uh, many of the good sunscreens on the market today, including the ones that we make, combine regular sunscreen actives with antioxidants to produce, to really, uh, really like just uh, elevate the protection. You know, I'm so glad you're putting that because years of working in beauty, I know this, it, it comes off the tongue, antioxidants are going to protect, protect your skin from oxidation, from the free radicals. But but you never really think about like, well, what does that actually mean? What's causing these free radicals? I mean, things just like you said, cooking in your house, right? If something mm -hmm. starts to smoke, you're starting to release that. Um, do you suggest then, you know, I think so many of us probably have some sort of an antioxidant for the face. But do you think it's important then to be slathering that all over the entire body? Well, so the point is this, our clothing is a wonderful shield. Okay. So therefore we don't necessarily need that. And so we sort of started this conversation with what's called the ex exposome theory, right? The exposure of aging. There's the skin exposome, which is, pollution, actually irritants, things that we're exposing ourselves to on areas that aren't covered. Okay. Right? But like, for example, right now, I mean. Exactly. So yes. So what I would say is in the summertime, it is a very good idea 
to use some products that are going to give you protection like a, a serum or a, a body lotion that would have antioxidants in it. Absolutely. Good to know. And keep in mind, everybody, with those vitamin C creams, once they start to go brown, they're not going to be as effective as we want them to be. But that is a story for another mm -hmm. time. So, okay, so we've got this idea that exposure really is showing us um, or that you're seeing that that people who even weren't in the sun um, are having these signs of aging. Do, do you happen to know it's, we've had some people on the podcast before and, and these numbers kind of get thrown around, but I heard once that 90% of vis visible aging is from UV, but you're saying that that's not necessarily. That Absolutely. Is that is not true. And I'll tell you that there's a study it was actually uh, done by uh, a group that worked at rock pharmaceuticals, you know, or I was saying, and what it did was it measured wrinkle index, right? And they looked at people in different states. And lo and behold, it turns out that New Yorkers have more wrinkles than Floridians. And yes. the idea there was that it's really secondary to pollution, not to the sun. You know, I think really where we need to sort of realign our thinking is for almost all of us, we have very little sun exposure every day, but we have pollution exposure 24 seven. And so, you know, I think that, you know, besides skincare, okay, I think having good air filters in our home is a very important thing. If you're lucky enough to have central air conditioning, clean your air conditioning filters because they're collecting all of this particulate matter. And so really, you know, a lot of advice is uh, depending on the filter you get, changing it every month or two. I'm literally like mentally thinking right after this, I'm buying a, a because I live in New York City, right? Um, okay. So I'm thinking immediately, I'm buying an, an air purifier. I do clean the yeah. filters in my ACs, but you know, good, good. Yikes, yeah. this is Amber, terrifying. I have to tell you for this recording, I have my air purifier off because the fan is a little it's bit loud. loud. But yes, absolutely. You know, this is something uh, I, I really do. I actually want to backtrack for one minute because even let's say when we talk about sun protection, I think that we mostly get marketed to to think about sunscreen, but we dermatologists say protection from sun has got to be three pronged. Yes, the use of sunscreen for sure. The other thing is use of sun protective clothing, mm -hmm. especially when you think about areas like our back and all sorts of areas where you can just miss the really even okay. application of sunscreen. Sunscreen should be applied every two hours. I'm a grandmother and I can tell you that when I go to my grandkids' birthday parties, if they have a pool party, all of the little children, 90% of them are now showing up with bathing suits that are long sleeved. Okay. So remember the three pronged approach for the sun protection is sunscreen, SPF clothing, which is called UPF. But the third thing, which I think is also so important is just try not to be under the direct sun between the peak hours of UV radiation from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And so that's gonna be sort of the same thing when we talk about pollution, right? So indoor pollution is bad, okay? Right. I'm gonna give you a few tips, you know, get the air filter. The other big thing is, you know, dust mites are awful. And oh, they really it's like the one thing I'm allergic to. Yeah, sorry, oh, yeah. You know that. So I wanna tell you, they collect also on our pillowcase and stuff. And the best detergent to actually get rid of the most dust mites possible is the all brand, all, yeah. and it's a liquid called all free clear. And it's yes. even much better. Great. That's yes. what we that's use. Yay. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Right. And try to wash your pillowcase every two or three days so that you're not rub. You know, a lot of times we think about, okay, before we go to sleep at night, let's put on our products. But then if we do that and then we rub our pillowcase, our face into our pillowcase and we haven't changed it or washed it for a week and we're just rubbing in those dust mites. You know, that's yeah. where we can go wrong. So it's a very, we've got to have a holistic approach. Uh, I'm glad that this is a video too, because I can tell you, I've done very little to my face. I myself have injected myself with filler here, but I've never had laser, uh, any kind of surgery. And I'm 70 years old. I was so going to say, I you look amazing. Yes. Thank you. 
But, you know, following this advice, you know, as they say, I don't just, you know, talk the talk. I absolutely walk the walk. And I think that it's a good thing to try to heed some advice from a 70 year old who has stayed youthful, because I, I know for a fact that if we protect ourselves, even sort of taking that holistic approach, protect yourself from the sun and uh, three pronged approach from pollution with the right laundry detergent, the air filters, all this kind of thing, and then antioxidants. I mean, this is phenomenal advice. And I mean, you are I, looking at you, you're convincing me, like I said, air filter. I also have um, dust mite pillowcases. So those are something that you can look into. Sure. And if you've got yeah. a mattress, you can get dust mites. So if you have real you're severe right. dust mites. You're right. Yes, yes. And in fact, I think you mentioned that you're allergic to dust mites and allergists yeah. are very big on that. And yeah, I think that's very good advice. And then, you know, those um, Swiffer makes those little dust things. Those things are great. I go over them at my house like every, every, right. I'm going to say two or three days when you start to see the dust settle, literally. Yeah. Right. Um, but it's a great way to pick stuff up. Um, and, and I love that you gave us all, all free and clear. I feel like all free and clear is just great for so many reasons because you don't, as much as it's nice to have the clothes that smell great, um, mm -hmm. all those extra yeah. unneeded fragrances and chemicals in your body, not the best. Thank you. Yes, because that's another thing. Okay, artificial fragrance is another thing that, uh, you know, artificial fragrance is very common to get sensitive to, not yeah. even to say allergic to, but to get sensitive to. Once you sensitize your skin, believe it or not, you get a little bit of what we almost call like subclinical inflammation. It's not like you're really going to look red or feel it, but much or most artificial fragrance at some level is going to just inflame everybody in a, in a not very obvious way. And believe it or not, that kind of inflammation sets off enzymes that break down collagen. So uh. also exposure to things. And so sometimes it's very sort of like innocent exposure, like you're saying with detergents that could have fragrance, but also, and this is also, I want all of your listeners to think about too many of, I know my own patients will come into me and they are irritating their skin because they really believe in that whole sort of, you know, no guts, no glory. So, oh, okay, yeah. I'm going to use the strongest retinoic acid I can find. And I'm going to, I'm going to want to turn red and peel. Please don't do that because once you've done that, you're definitely activating enzymes that are going to break down your collagen and everything. Yeah. You know, I, I have a love hate with retinol. I used to be able to tolerate it. And now that I'm in my forties, my, my body just doesn't as much. Um, so lower versions sometimes, but you know, I used to use a 0.05% and, and I just, it's, it's not working. And there's so many other great exfoliators on the market mm -hmm. that I've found because I know retinol is really, it is a gold standard. It, it is a phenomenal product, but, um, you know, I, it's just but like not anything, for everyone, not for everyone. Not for everyone really. And also not at the same times, so, you know, sometimes I think um, as your hormones are shifting, like something that might've worked for you then might not now. Mm -hmm. And who knows it, it might again someday. Um, Dr. Lorda, you are, first of all, so amazing. I could talk to you all you. day. It is clear that you live and love skincare. I mean, you went, you first chose the right it. field, mama. I got to tell you. Um, yes. So mm -hmm. I, I do want to though address your skincare line because one of the things I was really impressed, you know, we, we're hearing this trend as a beauty editor. I feel like I've got a thousand products um, and I don't mind having, you know, the occasional night where I'm going to do a 12 step routine, but, mm -hmm. but mostly it's like wash my face, throw on a serum moisturizer, get to bed or an SPF in the day. Um, and I really was drawn to your line because there's this new trend towards skinimalism, right? Which is skin care. Mm -hmm minimalism. Yeah. Um, and I feel like your, your line really kind of embraces that theory. Um, can you tell yeah. us a little bit about that and why you went that way? Sure. So, you know, because what, after it's actually now 41 years that I'm a board certified dermatologist. And when I'm having new patients come in, we do ask them, please bring in the products you're using. Right. Yeah. And it always amazes me almost without fail that a new patient will bring in a shopping bag full yeah. of stuff. Yeah. And, you know, most of the time I start to lay it out and say, well, do you realize this one is counteracting this one? And do you turn red and pilly? Oh, yes, I do. And so one of my goals in creating my line was to really make products that would multitask. So I'll walk you through sort of like a few of our products that are just almost like a great baseline. OK, and, and how they get back to protection from 
those external aggressors, the exposome theory. Okay. So our gentle hydrating cleanser, super hydrating and gentle. Okay. Beautiful. And yes. And remember I said, I want to really protect you from uh, pollution. So that's got in it a brown algae that actually absorbs pollution particles from the surface of our skin before they get into the living layers. You wash with it, you leave it on for about two minutes. So brush your teeth while you got on, wash it off. And you've got great anti-pollution protection. I'm a big believer in doing it morning and night. Why? There's a lot been written recently. Oh, you don't have to wash in the morning. Are you kidding me? After you slept all night with all of that exposure to the death mites, it's super important oh. to wash in the morning. So that's a morning and night. Interesting. After so you're that, supposed to wait, you're supposed to so leave it on for two minutes. I've never heard yes, that because I was using yes. it and I would wash, you know, rub it yeah. in it. And I will say it's nice because it's a beautiful gel, but it foams. It yes, has a nice you. light foam. So it gives you that kind of foaming. I'm cleaning my face. Um, I am guilty. I do not wash my face in the morning. I, I, I rinse it, but I guess with water, but I guess yeah. now I, I need to uh, mm -hmm. soap, huh? Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, that especially because a regular cleanser isn't necessarily going to get rid of the dust mites. God, gotcha. We specifically okay. put that in there because it gets rid of the PM, that particulate matter I was telling you that gets carried by the dust mites. So please do that. Okay. Amazing. You can even usually get rid of your eye makeup with that. So I want you to put on your eyelids because I want you to have that good protection. After that, I do have to tell you, we're very proud that we won the Allure Best of Beauty with our eye gel as the best and anti-puff product. And that is a product where I'm introducing, which we have in a number of the products. I see you have our sunscreen there too, uh, a, an antioxidant called lipochromin. And what I'm going to tell you about lipochromin on one assay for strength, it's the strongest antioxidant that exists. It is synthetic. It was made originally for medical use for cancer patients. It's still used in some regimens for cancer patients, but it's the only antioxidant that will not only get rid of oxygen free radicals, which, you know, they destroy the lipid layer, the top layer of our skin, but it gets rid of carbon and nitrogen free radicals, which destroy our collagen, our elastin and our hyaluronic uh, content of our skin. So I think it's very important. Look for that lipochromin and it's a big featured product uh, ingredient that we have in our stuff. I want to talk to you about our serums and I'm not sure oh. which one you've got there. So now. I have the intense repair and, and, and right. I didn't get to try the, um, the eye cream, but, um, okay. but it also has a deep puffing as well. Yes. That's what it's great. For the best okay. Deep puffing. Yeah. So now can you use it? Can you use it above and below? 300, yes. 360 That's amazing. Degrees around. It's called the tightening eye gel. Now the intense replenishing that's our serum that's got that lipochromin. Again, okay. the only antioxidant that's going to protect your collagen, your elastin, your hyaluronic, all of that from free radical damage. None of the other antioxidants do it. And you can see it gives you this immediate glow. Yes. It really But it feels so lightweight and beautiful on the skin. I mean. Right? Yes. I, I love it. You know, at 70, you can imagine that I live. You want, yes, yeah, so all the, yeah. Isn't it funny? Somebody came on once and they were like, you know, in your like twenties and maybe early thirties, you want it all matte, matte, matte because your skin is hydrated and plump and glowy. And then when you start to get into your forties plus, you're like, oh my God, give me all the glow back because my skin exactly. is not. Yes. So I'm with you. I'm with you on that one. But yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And then our sunscreen. And so- our sunscreen's got that, again, the lipochromin, but I am also, and I've got to put a plug in for this. I'm a 1 million percent believer in a sunscreen needing to protect us from that HEV visible blue light. I, I'm glad we were, okay, we're coming full circle to this because I was going to ask you what you think on that. Yes. So, you know, let me just say this to you. Ophthalmologists, will tell you, and they've said this for decades, that HEV blue light, high intensity uh, visible light, wrecks our retina. So anybody who's wearing contacts or prescription lenses has the filter for blue light. I, I really take issue with people on social media saying, oh, blue light can't hurt the skin. If it can hurt your retina, trust me, it can hurt your skin. And the point is, 
that we really do need that protection. Okay. And so this is just an extra thing that we have thrown into our sunscreens. We actually make two sunscreens, but they both have that similar tint and they have the lipochrome and they have great firming peptides, great moisturizers. And I think you can see your skin almost really looks this nicer. One, like, it does. Right? And, and you know, it, it, it has like a little bit of coverage too, because you don't see the mm -hmm. blue in my in my veins as much. Yes, it, this it side is really automatically look nicer. We think beautiful. It is a beaut. I mean, this is the one that's. I was like, oh my gosh, this is a beautiful. It has just that right amount of glow. Thank and then you, you also have um an enzyme polish. So again, um, was there like a total of six total products? So there's like one or two choices for each, except for the eye cream. Am I yes, right? Actually, we have. I think now we are definitely up to twelve products. Because just like you said, we've got two different cleansers. We also have an exfoliating cleanser. We have two different sunscreens, mineral only, and one that's called the hybrid with the zinc and chemicals in it. We have uh, three different serums because, you know, we know that it's not necessarily one size fits all, but my whole ethos of protecting you from all the environmental aggressors, it's in every formula we make. But, and I don't expect you to be using 12 products. Well, you know, you know I, and, and forgive me what I was saying, but I think it's like a very minimal, like it's six total steps, not products. Yes, I know you've got, you. So when you yes. go to shop your site, it's very, very easy because it's like, here's the, you know, choose a cleanser, choose um, your exfoliator, mm -hmm. whether it's a pad or, or this, mm -hmm. choose your sunscreen, choose your serum, eye cream, SPF. Yes. And we really try to be educational on the site. Yeah. I invite all the listeners go to it to really learn more because, you know, our skin, we are the owners of our skin and it's yeah. so important for us to educate ourselves. And my message is you can stay self-confident or become self-confident about your appearance at any age. And, and I, I feel I'm living proof of that after seven decades of life. I mean, you are gorgeous inside and out. Thank I you, absolutely you. loved having you on here. And Dr. Loretta, I have to say to everybody listening, take a look at some of the, she's got great before and afters of real people's skin from their face to their lower back. So when we're talking about this, if you're not quite convinced yet about how um, exposure and exposome aging works, definitely check that out. Um, Dr. Loretta, if people want to know more about your products, if they want to learn more about you, see you and your beautiful daughters, where should they go? Yeah. So, and I do do this line with my two wonderful daughters. So go right to drlorett.com, drloretta.com. And also on social, we're on at Dr. Loretta. Thank you. And uh, I have one at Dr. Loretta Durham, but I do a lot of social reels on at Dr. Loretta. We're here to educate you and share in the joy of feeling good about ourselves. And hey, you know, uh, before I let you go, where where are you practicing? Where's your where are your offices? And right outside, well, as in part of Miami. I'm in Miami, Florida. Oh, can't wait to move there. It's not an if for me. It's just a when. Um, good I want to. Thank you so much for being on with us today. And of course, everybody listening at home, if you have questions you want to pass on to me or ask me about the products I've tried, you can always email me at hello at artbeautypodcast.com. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Art Beauty Podcast. Thank you so much, Dr. Loretta. Really loved having you. And to everybody Thanks. else, we will see you next Tuesday, hopefully a little bit more protected. Bye now. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.